Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mihir Shah once again with another video. This is a part 2 of our last minute revision. Topics to be covered to easily pass your TY BMS M6 operation research paper. Okay, we have already completed the first part in which we had three topics. Now this is the second part. Let us see which are the other topics which are very simple to cover up. Now the fourth type of sum that we need to cover up is from the topic assignment model. And under, under that, we are going to solve the sum based on minimization. So, assignment model minimization sum. Okay. So, let us see how to solve the again a very simple topic. Okay. Now, let us see how to solve the very first sum. The following matrix gives the cost of performing four jobs that is A, B, C, and D by four contractors named as 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, we have been given four jobs and the name of four contractors and the details of all the jobs and contractors after that they are given us find an assignment of contractors to job so as to minimize the total cost now this question clearly says that we need to find the minimization of the total cost so now this assignment problem sum is based on minimization okay now there are various types of sum so this is one of them which is based on minimization so now let us see how to solve this sum keep in mind all the steps that I'm going to say okay so now let's start with step number one the first step will be based on whereby we'll have to create and find something called as row minimization so now this will be our first table okay so this is like a table one where we are going to find row minimization okay now row minimization let us see how to create this okay so what we are going to do is uh, with the help of the scale and a pencil we are going to uh, replicate you know the table which we have been given okay so we'll have like you know the headers we have the jobs and the contractors given to us okay, so I guess that's more than enough okay now for jobs we have a b c and d so we'll note down this as a b c and d and for contractors we had one two three four so one two three and four okay now step number one in order to find or make this table of row minimization we have to find the lowest value in each row and subtract that value from all other elements from the same row okay so now row meaning all the contractors okay so we have four rows row number one row number two row number three row number four so we are going to find row minimization from each row so in the first row the minimum value check the which is the minimum value eight is the minimum value so we'll have to subtract eight from all the elements present in row number one so it will be eight minus eight it will be zero 22 minus 8 which will be 14 28 minus 8 which is 20 13 minus 8 which is 5 similarly now this was from row number one similarly from the second row in our second row the minimum value is 10 so it will be 14 minus 10 which is 4 20 minus 10 which is 10 26 minus 10 which is 16 and 10 minus 10 which is 0 similarly in the third row the minimum value is again 8 so it will be 10 minus 8 which is 2 18 minus 8 10 30 minus 8 is 22 and 8 minus 8 is 0 lastly in the last row the minimum value is 4 so 7 minus 4 is 3 24 minus 4 is 20 32 minus 4 is 28 and lastly 4 minus 4 is 0 step number one we had to find the row minimization now step number two in any in any kind of assignment sum okay the first two steps will mostly be the same where we are finding minimization of cost okay second will be column minimization So now we need column minimization again we will create so this is our step number one 
step number two. So again, we will create a similar structure. Okay, again jobs may be had A, B, C and D. So we write that as A, B, C and D. And contractors may be had 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now for column minimization, okay, again the similar pattern. We need to find the smallest value from each column and subtract that from all the element in the subsequent column. Okay, so we'll now in, in, in our sum we have four columns column A, column B, column C, and column D. So in column A, the lowest value, so but not, but we have to take it from the row minimization table. Okay, so the lowest value in your column A is zero. So zero minus all the values, so zero minus zero is zero, four minus zero is four, two minus zero is two, three minus zero is three. Now from the column B, the lowest value is. 10 so 14 minus 10 is 0 10 minus 10 sorry 14 minus 10 is 4 10 minus 10 0 again 10 minus 10 we have 0 okay, this is 4 okay and lastly 20 minus 10 which is 10 in the third column the lowest value is 16 so it will be 20 minus 16 which is 4 16 minus 16 0 22 minus 16 will be 6 and 28 minus 16 is 12 in the last 0 is the lowest value so 5 minus 0 is 5 and then we have 0 0 and 0 okay so first step we need to find is the row minimization secondly column minimization now comes the most important part after column minimization, whatever table has been created, now from here we will have to start marking or you know start assigning the assignment. Now assignments are nothing but the number zero which will be present in the table. We have to first start assigning zeros row in the form of rows and once we have completed the rows then we have to see from the point of view of column. We always mark the assignment with a square symbol and we will mark those zeros or we'll assign those zeros in which the row in the entire row there are only one zero. Okay, so now take this example. In the very first row, there is only one zero. So we will assign that that is our first assignment. First always we'll have to go row wise. Okay, first we will always have to go row wise. So in the first row there is one zero so we have assigned that in the second row now if you look carefully there are multiple zeros so i cannot we cannot assign it directly we will only assign those rows which have only one zero okay and then we will check the columns which have one zero and thereafter we'll have to see whether we can you know mark the others okay whatever is remaining so in the first row there was only one zero so we have assigned it in the second row there are three zeros so we cannot choose which one is there so we leave it for right now in the third row again i can see there is one zero and another zero so again i cannot mark it okay so we jump to the next row in the fourth row i can see one zero so we will mark that now remember the moment you mark and assign a zero in the cross format okay that is the you know the vertical as well as horizontal whichever zeros will be present they will all be marked crossed for example now in the in the fourth one when we mark the zero whatever corresponding rows have zeros and columns which have zeros they all will get crossed out so we can't use that basically okay so chalo, we checked all the four rows the four rows are done now we jump come to the column Y. in column a there is only one and we have already assigned it so we jump to the second in the second column there are two zeros i can't choose any one of them right now so we jump to the next in column c there's only one zero so we will assign that the moment i assign a zero okay in the horizontal and vertical of that zero all the zeros will be other zeros will be crossed out so in the vertical form in the horizontal form you know the zero gets cut out 
so now in the first row there is one zero second row there is one third row may there is one alone zero remaining we will assign that also and fourth row also has one zero so now here if you look carefully there are you know four assigned values four assignments and this matrix table is also four by four okay so i'll write here the number of assignment the number of assignment is equal to four and the matrix size is also equals to four okay so four by four matrix and we have found the four assignment in one row there can only be one assignment similarly in one column there can only be that one particular assignment okay so since the assigned number of assignment matches the size of matrix size therefore we can say that the solution is optimal therefore the optimum assignment is now let us check what all values have we selected so in the first row in the first row we have selected job a so like the first contractor has selected job a and the value for which is so check here one a ka value in our question is eight so that comes to eight for the second contractor the second contractor ke liye the best assigned value is c okay so the c value for the second one is 26 for the third contractor the optimum or the assigned value is b the value of 3b is 18 and lastly the for the fourth contractor the assigned value is d so 4d ka value is 4 that's it we add up all the values that we have found so 8 plus 26 plus 18 plus 4 turns out to be rupee uh, turns out to be 56 in total therefore a final answer the total minimum cost equals to rupees 56 okay now the very fifth type of sum is again from the assignment model okay under this topic we are now going to solve the sum based on maximization the previous one was minimization now let us see how to solve if the question is based on maximization okay now let us see how to solve the sum uh, five salesmen are to be assigned to five territories and find the optimum assignment to maximize the sale now this is the very first sum based on maximization problem under assignment model so let us first check uh, whether the sum is balanced or not so now if you look carefully there are five territories and five salesmen so it is a balanced program altogether so now in order to solve some which are based on you know balanced program the very first step under maximization will be number one we need to get the regret matrix okay now in order to get the matrix uh, regret matrix first what we'll do we'll note down all the territories and salesman's values okay now in order to make the regret matrix the rule is from the question whichever is the highest value from the question whatever is the highest value that value minus all other values will give you the new regret matrix so in the sum the highest value which i can see in the question is 29 so it will be basically 29 minus all other values from the entire table so let us start 29 is being the highest value we will subtract that value from all other values in the entire table and we get a new regret table okay so 29 minus 24 is 5 29 minus 12 is 17 next is 21 19 
1 we are subtracting 29 with all other values to get these values okay 20 next one is 14 19 10 1 and 6 and for the last one it would be 11 12 6 15 and 21 so what we have done here was what was was the lowest the, the highest value 29 we subtracted all other values from 29 and got the new regret table that is step number 1 whenever there is a sum based on maximization okay now step number 2 will be our row minimization so row minimization now in order to make row minimization the rule is first we make the similar you know the structure of the table so we have t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 and sales mill may be have s1 s2 S3, S4, and S5. Now, under row minimization, the lowest value from each row will get subtracted from all other values. So now, this is from the minimization. The regret was made taking the highest value and then getting subtracting all other values. Now, for minimization, the lowest value we need to subtract from each row. So, from the first row, that is S1, the lowest value is five. So, five minus all other values, so it will be zero, twelve, sixteen. 14 and 17 in the second the lowest is 0 so all the values will remain as it is in the third the lowest value is 1 so it will become 15 12 14 5 and 0 in the fourth the lowest value is 1 so it will become 13 18 9 0 and 5 uh So in the next one, the lowest value is six, so it will become five, six, zero, nine, and fifteen. Once you get the you know the row minimization, the next step is third column minimization. Now, in order to get column minimization, again we create similar table where we have T one, T two, three, T T four, and T five. सेल्स मिल में एस वन एस टू एस थ्री एस फोर एंड एस फाइव ना कॉलम बाई विच एवर इज द मिनिमम वैल्यू ना यर जीरो इज द मिनिमम सो जीरो माइनस ऑल ऑफ द वैल्यूज सो यर द वैल्यूज रिमीन सेम सो इन कॉलम मिनिमाइजेशन विच एवर वैल्यू इज लोएस्ट इन द कॉलम विल गेट सपरेक्टेड फ्रॉम ऑल अदर सब्सिक्वेंट वैल्यूज सो इन आर सेकेंड कॉलम फोर इज द मिनिमम वैल्यू सो वी माइनस फोर विद ऑल अदर वैल्यूज सो इट विल बी एट Zero, eight, fourteen, and two. In third, the lowest is zero, so it will be sixteen, one, fourteen, nine, and zero. The fourth one, the lowest is again zero, so the value remains fourteen, seventeen, five, zero, and nine. And last, me again zero is the lowest, so seventeen, fifteen, zero, five, and fifteen. Once we are completed with row minimization and column minimization, the next step is we need to assign the values of zeros. So now row wise, those rows which has only one zero will be first assigned, and thereafter subsequently we go to the next, and thereafter the columns. So in the first row, there's only one zero, so we assign that zero. Subsequently, all other zero will get crossed out. In the second row, there's again only one zero, we assign that. In third, again one zero. We assign that. Fourth, again one zero. In fifth, again one zero. So we have assigned all the zeros which are there in the table. So now we'll check to you know we'll check whether the solution is optimized or not. So the assignment values, the assignment values are one, two, three, four, five. So we have five assigned values, and matrix size is. It also equals to five. Therefore, we have an optimal solution. So we can say that for the solution is optimal. Now, once the solution is optimal, we can directly get the final answer. Therefore, the optimal assignment under maximization problem is S one. 
for S1 or salesman 1, the territory given was T1, the value for which is 24. For S2, the territory given is T2, the value for which is 25. For S3, the value is T5, which is 28. For S4, the value is T4, which is 28 again and for s5 the value is t3 which is 23 the total of which will come to 24 plus 25 plus 28 28 23 comes to 128 therefore our final answer therefore they told you maximize sales so the maximization you know the total maximum you can say therefore the total maximum Sale is 128. Okay, now the next one is based on network analysis. From this topic, uh, the sum based on critical part. Okay, that is the most simplest uh, topic of all. That is what we are going to learn ahead. Okay, so let us see how to solve sum based on network analysis containing critical part. Small assembly plant assembles PCs through nine interlinked activities. And the time duration for which is given below. So now we have been given different types of activities. You can see 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 5 and all those things. And they are giving you the durations. The very first thing what they ask us to find is draw a network diagram. Second, calculate and tabulate for each activity the earliest start, earliest finish, latest start, latest finish time. Okay. After that they are asking you find the critical and subcritical part and lastly calculate and tabulate total float, free float, interfering float and independent float. Okay. Now in order to start with the sum, okay, we will start with the very first part which is where we need to draw a network diagram. Okay. Remember network diagram will always start with the nodes, there are activities given to us and based on those activities okay, we will be creating a network diagram Chal. so we will start with the creating part now the very first activity which is given in the question is 1 to 2 and the duration is 2 then we have 1 to 3 1 to 4 1 to, you know all these things are given to us so now remember look at the first three act uh, the first two activities no take the first three activities 1 say 2 1 say 3 and 1 say 4 so it means it means we'll always start with the very first node Remember, we are making a little bigger node because here we will be, you know, uh, writing it something. So, uh, just keep it this way for a simple. Every node will be divided in three parts. Remember, every node will be divided in three parts. This is node number one. Now, activity they are giving you. Activity one and two, one and three and one and four. So, we have activity. This is activity one. Alright, your activity 1 and 2 is there. Okay, activity 1 and 2. So, I'll note down this as activity 2 and we will divide this one. The duration for activity 1 and 2 is 2 hours. So, I'm noting it here as 2. Then we have 1 and 3. So, from 1, we have another activity which is coming out. That's activity 3. Again, I'll divide this in two parts. Uh, the duration for which is 2 and the, uh, we have one more activity coming out from four, 1 that is activity 4 so I'm noting this as my activity 4 again I'm dividing it in 2 parts ok so activity 1, 2, 3 and 4 is done now from activity 2 if you, if you look carefully in the question it's given that from activity 2 there is activity 5 being taken succeeding with activity 5 so we have from 2 we have 5 so I'll write here from 2 there is activity 5 and the duration is 4 next we have activity 3 from 3 we have 6 and again from 3 we have 7 okay so from activity 3 we have 6 and then from activity 3 we also have 7. So I will go ahead and check. Uh, after that we can see there is activity 4. From 4 also there is a 6. So it means from 4 
as well as from 3 both of them are getting connected to activity 6 ok the duration from 3 to 6 is 8 and from 4 to 6 it is 3 ok now from 3 we finish the 3 to 6 now so we will go with the next one so there is 3 to 7 and there is uh, no other 7 given so I will take it from here straight the next one it will be from 3 to 7 the duration is 5 so I will note down this as 5 ok now we go ahead 4 to 6 is done so now we go ahead now after 4 to 6 there is 5 to 8 and if you go a little go a little ahead also there is 7 to 8 so from 5 we are jumping to 8 and from 7 also we are going to jump towards 8 so from 5 to 8 it is 1 hour I mean the duration is 1 hour and from 7 to 8 it is 4 hours so 5 to 8 is done next one was 6 to 9 and last minute is 8 to 9 so that, that's it we are trying we are almost coming to the end from 6 it is to 9 and from 8 also it is towards 9 so this is 9 and I again break it in two parts ok so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so we were able to create a network this is how your network diagram should have looked okay it has to start from a point and end over one single point okay once we have done this once this is done okay now what we'll do is they ask us to find the critical and subcritical part okay so we are here we have to note down the critical parts so first we'll note down the path whichever parts are available so under parts I'm writing here number one the very first part if I can see I'll go with the top one so this is part 1 2 5 8 and 9 so that, that's like uh, the first part so I'll have from 1 to 2 to 5 to 8 to 9 which is equal to now we need to add up all the duration so that was 2 plus 4 plus 1 okay now one more thing we forgot to note down the last two car durations uh, 8 to 9 the duration was 3 and 6 to 9 the duration was 5 okay so now we have completed so now we can do so 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 3 so 6 7 8 9 10 so I have your 10 hours the next one the next path I can take the next path as 1 3 7 8 and 9 so you can take that also so I'll take 1 3 7 8 9 you can take n many okay you can take n many number of times okay till the last from the start to the end so here it will be 2 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 so that is 5 6 7 11 and 3 14 hours take a third one I can take this as 1 3 6 9 so 1 3 6 and 9 that will be 2 plus 8 plus 5 which comes to 15 hours okay and we can even go for the last 1 4 6 and 9 which will be okay again 1 to 4 I haven't written so we'll note down that first from 1 to 4 the duration is 1 hour so that will be 1 plus 3 plus 5 that comes to 9 hours ok once we have done this once we have done this we can now finally note down the final answer I can write therefore the critical part will be now the critical part will always be the one which has the highest r the highest value which is the third option so our critical part is 1 dash 3 dash 6 dash 9 okay therefore the project completion 
time equals to 15 hours okay that, that that's the first thing and secondly they also ask you to find the subcritical part so i'll write here sub critical path now the subcritical part is the second highest so this was the highest 15 hours the subcritical will be the second highest which is 14 so that will be 1 dash 3 dash 7 dash 8 dash 9 and iska we'll write it as sub critical path time was 14 hours okay so this is how you all had to solve the very first part that is when they asked you to find the network diagram and to find the critical and subcritical part okay now what were these two gaps which we had done okay now this is basically for the further part of the sum okay which we require okay so now let us see how we can go ahead so this is the first part where they asked you to find the critical part and stuff so we are done with the network diagram and we have completed the critical part now how to fill up these values okay now let us see how to fill those values okay look at this very carefully you will always start now this this is the first part okay remember when when we make this zero okay on top we have written the name of the activity this is your earliest start time okay that value is nothing but your earliest start time the first part meaning that is the time in which your activity can start at the earliest okay it's called the earliest start time and this will be the latest time okay the last time meaning how last you can make okay so your starting point the starting time is called the earliest time and this is like your latest time okay latest start point you can say okay so earliest time latest time earliest time latest time this is how you need to remember okay so now let us see how to fill up this this diagram okay always remember you will always start with first the earliest time for all okay so always remember the very first activity or the very first node the value will always be zero okay now we add zero now these are all your durations okay you have to remember these are all your durations so remember the duration when we go ahead that duration gets added to it so zero plus two will give you two 2 plus 4 gives you 6. Now, 6 plus 1 gives you 7, but now there is interconnection. Okay, there is a, a is a there is a you know merger. So whenever there is a merger, we'll have to wait because we are going forward. Chalo, till then we go the other way. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. Okay, now 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 look at this very carefully. This was 6 plus 1, which used to come as 7. And this is 7 plus 4 which is 11. Whenever you are going forward, whenever you are going from left to right, whichever is the highest value whenever it is going to get merged, okay, whenever there is going to be a merger, the highest value will be recorded. So 6 plus 1 is 7 and 7 plus 4 is 11. So I will note down this as 11. And 11 plus 3 becomes 14. But again, this and this is going to be merged. So we will see later on that. Okay. Chalo. So now here we go ahead try filling up the other parts. Uh, 0 to 1 is 1 1 plus 3 is 4 but here 2 plus 8 is also there so 2 plus 8 is 10 1 plus 3 is 4 so we will take the 10 the higher value this is 10 10 plus 5 15 11 plus 3 14 so we will take the higher value which is 15 okay always remember whenever you are going from left to right whenever there is a merger always the higher value among the two will be taken now once you are done with that whatever is the last value that will become the last time and now we have to go in reverse backward order so we'll have to go backwards so we let, let us start with the top part first so 15 minus 3 is 12 12 minus 1 is 11 11 minus 4 is 7 7 minus 2 is uh, 5 but i'll have to wait because now there's again a merger so we'll wait. I'll go ahead with something else. 15 minus 5 is 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. Now 7 minus 1, I'll wait because there's a merger. 12 minus 4 is 
एट एट माइनस फाइव विल गिव यू थ्री एंड टेन माइनस एट विल गिव यू टू सो नॉ सो दिस इज मर्जिंग वेन एवर यू आर गोइंग फ्रॉम राइट टू लेफ्ट वेन एवर गोइंग बैकवर्ड द लोएस्ट विल बी ऑलवेज टेकन वेन यू गो लेफ्ट टू राइट द हाइएस्ट वी टेक फ्रॉम लेफ्ट टू फ्रॉम राइट टू लेफ्ट विल ऑलवेज टेक द लोएस्ट सो एट माइनस फाइव इज थ्री टेन माइनस एट इज टू टू इज द लोअर वैल्यू सो विल टेक दिस एज टू ओके नाउ लास्ट वन सेवन माइनस टू इज फाइव टू माइनस टू इज जीरो एंड सेवन माइनस वन इज Six. So the lowest value was two minus two, which is zero. So we will take this as zero. So this is how we were able to complete this entire network diagram with the early start point and the latest, you know, the latest start point. Okay. So once you all have done this, now we will see ahead how we can use these values and formulating the remaining table. Chalo. Now let us see that how to go ahead with this sum. Okay, now let us start. Uh, you know, start with the second part where they ask us to find EST, that is early start time, EFT, early finish time, latest start time, latest finish time. Okay, now just to make it more simple, okay, I have you know remade it with the colors indicating the early start, latest start. So I have made it into different colors, so it becomes easy for all of you all to understand which value we will be taking where. Okay, now in order to find those four things. Uh, we will have to make a table. We will have activities. Okay, whatever activities were given in the question. So one, two, one, three, one, four, one. You know all these activities: two, five, three, six, three, seven, four, six. All these activities have been taken. Time has been taken from the question itself, but all the times are given in green. Okay. Now the very first thing what I'll need to find is the early start time. Okay. Now it's very simple, very simple. Okay, now everyone look at this very carefully at the explanation. Okay, in order to note down the early start time, now since the early start time we have taken here in red. Okay, early start time meaning the very first part. Okay, so now for activity one and two, one and three, one four, two five, all these के लिए we need to find the early start time. Very simple. Only look at the start. In order to find the early start time, only look at the first value. Okay, only look at the first value. For activity one, for activity one, what is the early start time? That is zero. Okay, the first part is called early. This is the early start. This is like the start and this is the latest. Okay, this is like the finish time. Start time, finish time. Okay, so so we have the start, earliest start and early, you know, the latest start times. Okay, so for activity one, only look at the first part. Okay, to easily identify it. For activity one, the latest uh, for the earliest start time is zero. So I'm noting it as zero. Again, for again the second also is activity one. So activity one it is again zero. For third again it is one. So zero. For activity two, this is activity two. Early start time is two. So I'm noting it down as two. Three के लिए it is again two. Again we have three, so again three का start time early start time is two. For activity four the early start time is one. For activity five the early start time is six. For activity six it is ten. For activity seven it is seven. And for activity eight it is eleven. Okay, as simple as that. the first step always find the early start time now after getting the early start time come at the last column that is the you know is like the last uh, you know the latest finish time okay so in order to find that now latest finish time ke liye very simple you have to look at the last activities look at the last activities and the latest time that is the second part of the time like for example for activity 2 this is activity 2 the latest time the second time is 7 so i'm noting down with blue because that's like in blue in so it's for for everyone to understand so latest finish time is 7 next is activity 3 activity 3 ka latest finish time is 2 for activity 4 it is 7 For next, for activity five, we will have to look at the second numbers. Okay, for activity five, it is eleven. 
for activity 6 it is 10 for activity 7 it is 8 for activity 6 it is 10 for activity 8 it is 12 for activity 9 it is 15 again activity 8 it is 12 and for activity 9 it is 15 okay so latest uh, the earliest start time you look at the first activity whatever is the earlier time we noted down for the latest uh, finish time look at the second activity called values and according to that we note down those values now let us start go ahead we need to find the earliest finish time that is nothing but early start time plus the time the duration which is given we just need to add them okay so for the first case I'll just show it to you all so this is supposed to be 0 plus 2 okay 0 plus 2 which is 2 okay in the second case it would have been again early start time so 0 plus 2 it is 2 so what I do here is I'll note down all the early start time so 0 2 2 2 1 6 10 7 and 11 okay so 0 plus 1 is 1 2 plus 4 is 6, 2 plus 8 is 10, 2 plus 5 is 7, 3 plus, I mean 1 plus 3 is 4, 6 plus 1 is 7, 10 plus 5 is 15, 7 plus 4 is 11, and 11 plus 3 is 14. Okay, now, 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 now. In order, so this is how you have to find the early finish time. So that is just adding the, the first two, the EST with the time. Now in order to find the latest uh, start time, it will be latest finish time minus the value of time. Okay. So now in order to do that, the LFTs are all given to us here. So what I'll do here is I will use those values as a uh, as in blue. So I'll take that as a blue. So it will be 7, 2, 7, 11, 10, 8, 10, 12, 15, 12 and 15. Now for this I will subtract okay, the values of your time. Okay, it is minus time, so minus 2. So 7 minus 2, we have 5. 2 minus 2 will be 0. 7 minus 1 is 6. 11 minus 4 is 7. 10 minus 8 is 2, 8 minus 5 is 3, 10 minus 3 is 7, 12 minus 1 is 11, 15 minus 5 is 10, 12 minus 4 is 8 and 15 minus 3 is 12. Okay, so this is how you all had to actually find the value of EST, EFT, LST and LFT. Okay, very simple. We noted down the activity, the time, the duration, and according to the rule which I've mentioned here, the early start time is the first value of the first activity. Latest finish time is the second value ka no, second activity ka second value, and then according to the formula. Okay, so this was the second thing that they had asked us to find. Okay, now the next thing what they asked us to find is. Uh, the next thing that we will be finding will be okay see they had asked us first of all make a diagram we did that they asked you to find the early uh, start time early finish time so we have done even that now third thing what we need what we'll be finding in the sum is basically something called as a tail slack and a head slack okay now let us see what is that because that will be required in order to find the last thing that they had asked us to find they had asked us to find free float okay uh, total float and all other floats which are there so for that we need tail slack and head slack okay so chalo, let us see how to find first of all those two values okay now in order to find the tail slack or head slack now see what we have to do here okay very simple it is very simple but just remember the order how we are going through it okay now in order to find the tail slack tail meaning see we have an activity okay so for that activity 
the tail the 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 backward the backward position of that activity will be called as a tail and the ahead one will be called as the head okay so for activity 1 and 2 this is my activity 1 and 2 okay for activity 1 and 2 this will become my tail this will become my head the first one will be the tail the second one will be the head okay so for tails like basically again you'll have to look at the first value for head you'll have to look at the second value now see what, what we do here is first I'll do with the tail slack of all the first values. So for the first value, okay, these are called the slack values. Okay, the values which are there in blue and uh, red, those are your slack values. So for activity one, the tail slack is nothing but the difference between both these values. So difference between zero and zero, which is zero. Okay, so that's zero minus zero. Again we have activity one. So that will be again 0 minus 0 which is 0. Again we have activity 1, 0 minus 0 which is 0. For activity 2, okay, it will be, you know, the higher minus, you know, the like latest minus the start, okay. So it will be 7 minus 2 which is 5. For activity 3, it will be 2 minus 2 which is 0. For activity 3, again it will be 2 minus 2 which is 0. For activity 4, 7 minus 1 which is 6 for activity 5 11 minus 6 which is 5 activity 6 it will be 10 minus 10 which is 0 for activity 7 it is 8 minus 7 which is 1 and for activity 8 it will be 12 minus 11 which is 1 okay now finding the head we will have to look at the second activity Okay, again the difference. So for activity 2, the difference is, you know, it will be 7 minus 2, which is 5. Next is activity 3. So it will be 2 minus 2, which is 0. Next is 4. So that will be 7 minus 1, which is 6. Uh, next is 5. 11 minus 6, which is 5. 6. 10 minus 10 which is 0 7 8 minus 7 which is 1 6 10 minus 10 which is 0 we have 8 12 minus 11 which is 1 9 which is 15 minus 15 which is 0 uh, we have 8 again so that will be 12 minus 11 which is 1 and lastly 9 15 minus 15 which is equal to 0 to get this was the tail slack and this is called as the head slack now we'll see that how or uh, where will we use this actually okay i hope everyone have understood understood till this point okay again a very important sum which cover up each and every thing in this particular topic okay and this network analysis ka critical part topic okay Chalo. now let us see the last part how to solve the last part Okay, now if you look here carefully, now we are on the last part where they ask us to find the total float, free float, independent float and interfering float. So these are the new four things that we need to find. Already we have found the early start time, the early finish time, latest start time, latest finish time, the tail slack and the head slack. Okay, now let us complete the remaining part. How to get these other values? Okay, so let us start with it. The very first thing they have asked us to find is the total float. Now total float ka formula is latest start time minus earliest start time. I have the latest start time minus the earliest start time. Okay, now the values are already there. We just have to use them carefully now. Latest start time. minus earliest start time this is my earliest start time this is my latest start time okay so latest start time is 5 earliest start time is 0 so I'll write here 5 minus 0 is equal to 5 next 0 minus 0 so I'll write this here as 0 minus 0 which is 0 Next for the third one, 
आई हैव टू जस्ट सब्रैक्ट दीज टू तो एल एस टी माइनस ई एस टी सिक्स माइनस जीरो तो सिक्स माइनस जीरो इज सिक्स नेक्स्ट इज सेवन माइनस टू विच इज फाइव नेक्स्ट इज टू माइनस टू विच इज जीरो नेक्स्ट इज थ्री माइनस टू विच इज वन सेवन माइनस वन विच इज सिक्स इलेवन माइनस सिक्स विच इज फाइव टेन माइनस टेन विच इज जीरो एट माइनस सेवन विच इज वन एंड ट्वेल्व माइनस इलेवन विच इज वन ओके दैट वॉज टोटल फ्लोट नाउ वी जम्प टू द नेक्स्ट वन फ्री फ्लोट नाउ फ्री फ्लोट का फॉर्मूला इज टोटल फ्लोट दिस इज जस्ट ना वॉट वी हैव गॉट माइनस हेड स्लैग ओके दिस इज दिस वैल्यू ओके सो हाउ टू गेट दैट आंसर नाउ नाउ यू जस्ट हैव टू सप्रैक बेसिकली अगेन सो आई यूज दैट विद रेड पेन सो इट डजेंट गेट मच डाउट सो टोटल फ्लोट एयर इज फाइव सो इट विल बी फाइव माइनस ओके सो ब्लैक सो विल डू इट विद ब्लैकिंग फाइव माइनस फाइव विच इज जीरो द नेक्स्ट जीरो माइनस जीरो विच इज अगेन जीरो नेक्स्ट सिक्स माइनस सिक्स विच इज जीरो नेक्स्ट टू एंड फाइव के लिए वी हैव फाइव माइनस फाइव विच इज जीरो द नेक्स्ट इज जीरो माइनस जीरो अगेन जीरो वन माइनस वन विच इज जीरो सिक्स माइनस दिस इज फोर एंड सिक्स सो सिक्स माइनस जीरो विच इज सिक्स फाइव माइनस वन विच इज फोर जीरो माइनस जीरो विच इज जीरो वन माइनस वन विच इज जीरो एंड लास्टली वी हैव अगेन वन माइनस जीरो विच इज वन okay so that is how you all have to find the free float next is independent float which is free float the one what we just now found minus the tail slide okay so free float which was zero minus the tail slide which is zero so zero minus zero is zero next zero minus zero again zero next we have again zero minus zero which is zero next zero minus 5 that is negative 5 next zero minus zero which is zero again zero minus zero is zero 6 minus 6 is zero 4 minus 5 is negative 1 0 minus 0 is zero 0 minus 1 is negative 1 and lastly 1 minus 1 is zero okay that was independent float and last is interfering float interfering float is nothing but it is equal to your head slack so whatever value we had got in head slack that becomes your interfering float so we have 5 0 6 i'm just noting it down i'm just noting these values here 6 5 0 1 0 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 Okay so with that we were able to complete this entire sum